Hi everybody, Dave Thomas here again, and today I am building the Baby Bertha by Estes. And this is a smaller version of the classic Big Bertha. Um, they classify this as an intermediate level kit, so if you've built one or two rockets already, this would be a good next project for you. It's relatively simple to put together and uses um, all the basic model rocket construction techniques. Like with any of our rockets, we want to check our parts list here and make sure we have everything. So in one bag, we have most of the pieces of the engine mount, the centering rings, the clip retaining ring, the engine block, and the engine tube itself. And this also includes the launch lug. The remainder of the engine mount, the clip, is in the bag with the recovery system, so the parachute and the shock cord. There is kind of a short, squatty body tube here, along with this egg-shaped looking nose cone. And then the fin material here is mostly pre-cut out. In my kit, too, the fins had already fallen out. And then finally we have some self-stick decals that will go on last. So my kit is complete, and I will put this aside, and we will start assembly. With any rocket kit, it's a good idea to completely read through the instructions before you start building. And the same goes with this video. If you're using this video as a guide, please watch through the entire video before you start building. Because you may find something that I do in here that you wish you would have done, or occasionally I make a mistake making these videos, and I show you how to fix it. Now, in this case, um, I do want to point out something. If you're planning on sealing your fins with sanding sealer of some, one sort or another, or if you're planning on papering your fins to strengthen them, then I would suggest doing the fin part here first. Go ahead and prepare the fins by sanding them, and then um, applying your sanding sealer or whatever else uh, other fin treatment you're going to use. And then while that is drying, you can come back and start in on the engine mount. Okay. Um, for purposes right now, I'm not in that big of a hurry, so I'm going to go through this um, step by step. I am going to seal my fins, but I will come back to that later. So the first thing we need to do is take out the engine mount here. I'll we'll need all those parts. I'm going to set aside the launch lug. And then as I said, the engine hook or engine clip is in this bag with the parachute and the um, shock cord. I'm just going to kind of poke it through here. That way I don't lose the other pieces that are inside this. And in fact, I'm going to take my launch lug put that through the hole and keep those in a bag to the side. All right, so our first step is to make a few marks here. So mark one end of this as aft so we don't get it confused later on. So this will be the rear of the rocket. And so from the aft end we need a mark at half inch or 13 millimeters. So that's going to go right there. And then we need another mark here. Okay, now note they're measuring this. Uh, yeah, okay. So this distance here is this number here, one and a quarter inches or 3.2 centimeters. So I'm going to put that right here. Sometimes these SD's drawings get a little bit confusing. Yeah, my mark was a little bit off there. Okay, and then the last mark is two and a half inches 
or 6.4 centimeters from the aft end. Okay, so that's going to be right here. Now we might have to extend these a little bit because the engine hook is going to go right through there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is cut a three millimeter or so not, uh, slot right here at the forwardmost part. And generally this is going to be about as long as whatever tick mark you made, depending on how big your marks are. And then the engine hook forward part goes in here. So it can just pop right in. And this is where I said we may have to extend our other marks here because they get hidden. I'm just going to extend that just a little bit there. And that one. Okay. And so what's going to happen next is we're going to apply some glue here. And then this retaining ring slides over the hook and its edge will line up with that mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that forward a bit and get my glue. And for this we can use either a wood glue or a white glue. Either one is fine. Um, the white glue gives you a little more working time. The wood glue is a little bit faster in setting and also a little stronger. And I like to use these little cotton applicators. You can just use the bottle if you like. Okay, and I'm just going to run that all the way around. You can just use your finger if you need to here. And it's not a big deal if you get a little glue on the clip there. Um, it won't stick to the metal very well anyway. And so now I'm just going to push this forward, and this is going to push that glue ahead of it. Okay, until we get right up to our mark. And now I'm just going to smooth that glue around. And I can do that on both edges. Okay, if you don't have that much glue, that's okay too. This isn't necessary. It's just a good way to use up the excess glue. And now I'm going to let this dry for just a few minutes before I go on to the next step. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry, we can go ahead and cut out the centering rings. And these are laser cut, and so the only thing we have to do is just cut off these little tabs that are just holding them inside the stock. And then cut out the little piece in the middle. And then if you want, just take a little bit of fine sandpaper here and just stick that in there. And this is just to rub off those little nubbins in case they get in the way. You don't want to do this too much or you have the tube slop around inside it. But this just cleans them off. And then the same on the outside. We just want to remove the little nubs that we're holding on there. The next thing we can do is insert the engine block or thrust ring, and this is going to go in the forward end of the engine mount, 
and it will lie flush against the top of the engine hook there. So here I'm just going to run a bead of glue on the inside of this tube. And we don't want too much, so be careful you don't get too sloppy with it. And if you need to, you can smooth this out with your finger. We don't want a great big bead of glue getting pushed up past the um, engine hook there. So you want a nice smooth bead all the way around. If you've got a lot of excess, go ahead and take that out. Okay, and then this is simply going to get pushed in until we reach the end of the engine hook there. And then just go all the way around and make sure that it's even. It'll have a tendency to push down farther opposite the engine hook, and you don't want to have that. You want this to be nice and level. Okay, and then that will dry. The next step, um, you can do this almost immediately. So now we have our two centering rings. The aft one with the notch in it is going to go here, and that's going to line up with our aftmost mark, like that. And then the other one, the forward ring, this is going to go on until it butts up against the top of the engine hook here. All right, so for both of these, I'm just going to run a bead of glue around the area preceding where it's sliding on so that it will push forward. And then I'm just going to slide that on. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn as I hit the glue here. And then the same thing for the back or aft ring. So here I'm going to put a little glue right below it. And now this one I can't turn it as much, although I can, it'll wiggle back and forth a bit. This tube got a little bit squashed in the package. But if you just reform it there, there we go. Okay, and I can, I can give it a little bit of a wiggle as I put it on there. it back. We want to make sure this ends with that hook going straight down the tube. Okay, and I'm just going to take my finger and smooth the excess glue into a fillet. And this will help strengthen it. Okay, here you want to try to avoid the clip. Although the glue won't stick to it, you know, if you do get a little glue on there, if you just move it around a little bit, it'll usually pop loose. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more glue on the forward side of the forward ring, also to make a fillet. And this is just going to strengthen the entire motor mount assembly here. And then I'm going to take the excess glue from that, and do the same thing down here on the aft end. And add a little bit more. Okay, now here I'm going to avoid the clip itself. And if you got a little gap like that, you can smooth that in. You know, a little bubble here and there. You can smooth it out for the aesthetics, but it's not going to hurt anything if it's there. All right, and now I'm just going to make sure that I'm reasonably even all the way around. 
and adjust the rings if needed. And now I'm going to let this set aside and completely dry. Next we're going to sand the fins. And if you had the, the problem like mine where some of the fins had come out of the stock material, go ahead and put them back in for this next step. And here I'm going to take some 100 to 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, if you have a sanding block or sanding tee, use that. If you don't, you can do this by hand. Okay, but here I'm just going to sand back and forth along the entire stock just to knock down any really high grain. Now you notice my fins are trying to go back and forth here. As again, two of them are loose already. So do this gently and then flip the whole thing over and do it some more. Okay, after that, go ahead and remove the fins and use your hobby knife to break any tabs that are still there. This one's barely holding on. Now, personally, I tend to keep scraps of balsa like this in a box, just so if I need a piece of balsa to repair something, or if I need stock material for my own designs, I don't have to go out and buy it. I may just have enough here for whatever I need. Um, if you don't keep a junk box of balsa, then this can just be discarded. Okay, next thing to do is line all the fins up together here and this is the root edge. This is the edge that will be glued onto the rocket. This is the leading edge and your grain should be parallel with the leading edge. If you go to put these on and they're not oriented that way you've got them turned around somehow. Alright, so for this next step uh, we're just going to sand all the edges together and this helps ensure that all the fins are exactly the same or close to it. Um, use a 100 to 150 grit sandpaper, this is 120. And I'm just putting these all together and I'm just dragging them across and keeping them held together. Okay, and that's going to take off um, some of the residue from the laser cutting process as well. And this, I'm going to turn these over and do every edge the same way. Just takes a few strokes. And the, mainly this is evening out the little nubs that were left from the cutting process. But occasionally you get one fin that might be just a little bit bigger than the others. And this will even that out as well. Excuse me. Okay, now this one may be a little difficult. Be careful when doing it so you don't end up snapping the balsa. Okay, so at minimum you want to do this much to the fence. Okay, and that's really all they have you do here. So if you don't want to do anything else, you can keep the fins all squared like this. And you'll hear a lot of different opinions on this, okay, but you can streamline these by rounding the leading edges here. Um, and you probably need to round this edge too, as it's sort of still a leading edge. And then uh, you could either leave the trailing edge is square, or you could taper those to get a, something closely approximating a real airfoil here. 
there are advantages and disadvantages to all of these. If you leave them square, you'll have the strongest fins. If you do a complete airfoil, it will go higher and faster. And if you do something in between, you get a compromise between strength and performance. Now, this model really isn't meant to go that high. If you look on the package, it says, you know, maximum height is something like 550 feet. 575 feet. Okay, so you might squeak a few more feet out of it. Um, I am going to seal the fins because that will help fill in the grain here and it will make painting it easier. But I'm going to leave the edges squared. This next part is optional. It's not needed to fly the rocket, but it will fill in the wood grains here. And so if you don't mind your rocket having kind of a grainy look on the fins, you don't need to do this part. But this is a polyurethane based sanding sealer. And you can apply this with a paintbrush. Uh, I'm just going to do it with this cotton swab here. And this is going to get down into the grain and fill that in. And when it's completely dry, I'll go through and sand down anything that's sticking up. And this will give us a level surface. Now probably, I should be wearing gloves here. Or at least a glove, so I don't get this all over my skin. And I'm being careful not to do the root edge here. If you get some on, you can sand it back off. But it's actually good to have a rough surface on the root edge because that will give it the glue something better to hold on to. Now you can go ahead and do both sides at once. And what I've got down over my mat here is a couple of layers of paper towel and then some small dowels. They're actually the, the handles from used applicators like I'm using here. If you want, you can just do one side at a time, let it dry, and then come back to the other side. Here, I'm just making sure I've got it all. And then the edges that are not the root edge, so the, the leading and trailing edges, those can be sealed. Okay, so just like that, I'm going to do the rest of these off camera because watching someone seal fins is about as exciting as watching golf. So, sorry to any golfers out there. I'll be back when I've got all the, the fins sealed. Now regardless of whether you decided to seal your fins or do any other treatment to them, our next step is to mark the body tube. And uh, Estes did a little bit of a combination here to save space and paper. And so this is our body tube marking guide through here. And then inside of it is the shock cord mount that we'll use later. Now here, all right, so when we cut this out, we want to know what we're cutting through, which is over here attaching the fins. Now, if you don't want to destroy your instructions, just make a photocopy of this. Uh, I'm just going to make note here, and this is all stuff that we can talk about after we're done. Okay, um, the alignment guide here is actually just for illustration. It will not fit up against this rocket. So go ahead and either copy this and cut it out, or just cut it out. You can use scissors or a hobby knife. Alright, 
And you'll want to have a small piece of masking tape handy for this next part. So now take the body tube and wrap this around one end with a little bit exposed. And the gray hashed area there is going to go on the bottom underneath. So we're going to overwrap this and then line up the two sets of alignment lines there. Now if it doesn't come all the way together, that's fine. Let's just do a little bits of difference to thickness and moisture and such. The critical part is to line these lines up. And then once we have that, just put your masking tape on. You don't even have to put it on tight, just enough to keep that together. Okay, and now you're going to take your pencil and just mark either side of this. So for each line there. Now most of these say FL for fin line. Okay, in fact, it looks like all of them say that. In some kits you'll have a launch lug line in here too. But apparently they're not doing a separate launch lug line. And you can slide that off and then gently take the tape off because again we're going to need this for the shock cord mount later on. And this is also why I suggest using masking tape rather than transparent tape. Okay, now according to the instructions we need a door jam. Okay, so you put this up against a door frame and use that to make the lines. And you draw the lines about halfway up the tube. Now, since door jams are really e uh, difficult to video, I am going to use this tube marking guide that Estes puts out. It's just a matter of finding which one fits the best. Okay, so I can run this around. Try and show you here. Okay, and then I can just bring my line through the two connections there. And again, about halfway up the tube will be sufficient. And this next step, step, they don't show you in the instructions, but I like to roughen up this area a little bit. So just take some of your sandpaper here. And you don't need to do this a lot. We're just taking the gloss off of the glassine coating on the cardboard. And this might remove your line. If you do, just put it back on. So this will help glue the fins on better. If you miss a spot, that's not a big deal either. Okay. Um, you don't want to roughen up too much of it, or it just means you're going to have to put more paint on it later. But that should be good there. Okay, coming back to our instructions. After we've got that marked, we can go ahead and install the engine mount. And here, we need to add a ring of glue on the inside up in here. <clears throat> and this is where having an applicator is going to work really well. And so, according to the instructions, um, we need a ring of glue about two inches from the aft end on the inside all the way around. It's about 5.1 centimeters for the metrically inclined. 
So here an applicator is going to work really well, although in a pinch you can use your finger. What I'm going to do is measure my applicator here, so there's two inches, I'm going to put my thumb at that point. Now I can dip this in, don't get it too sloppy, but now I can slide this in without touching. Now I touch my thumb against there and rotate around using my thumb as a distance guide. Okay, we can look in there and we've got a bead all the way around. Um, this can be fairly heavy and is often a good idea to do so. So now that I can see where it needs to go, I can put some more in any places that need it. And then as I slide this in, it will push the glue forward and form a fillet here. Now here, I'm going to push this in just a little. I'm going to leave myself some room here. And now I'm going to put another ring of glue about half an inch or so inside. And this will glue the rear centering ring. Now, if I do this in stages, as otherwise the back glue would just get pushed up against the forward glue by the forward centering ring. Now I'm going to push this in, and when I'm done, the aft end of the engine tube should be flush with the aft end of the body tube. And as I do so, I'm going to give this a little bit of a turn going in. Okay, and then when I end, I want my engine hook to be in between two of the fin lines. Right, now I use my ruler just as a leveling area here to make sure that the two tubes are now flush with each other. Okay, so I've got my alignment here a little bit off. If you're off just a little bit, it's not going to hurt. Okay, so everything's good there. And now this is a good time to let everything dry. So my fins are drying from being uh, sealed and all this glue needs to dry and this is a good point where you don't want to be in too much of a hurry let everything dry first so it doesn't shift on us later on my fins have been drying for about 24 hours now and you can see there's a little bit of a shiny sheen on them and this is from the sanding sealer and now what we're going to do is remove that from the top and here it's a good idea to have a sanding block or sanding tee like this, something that gives you a flat sanding surface. And then we're just going to sand this more or less with the grain. You want to do this just until you get that surface sheen off of it. So that what's left behind is only down inside the grain. And if you want a really super smooth finish, you can actually put another layer of sanding sealer on this. Now we also need to sand the edges once more, so especially the root edge here, we want to make sure there's nothing interfering with that, so the glue adheres well. The other edges, um, this will depend on what you decided to do with them. As I mentioned, I'm going to leave mine squared here, so I'm just going to remove any excess sanding sealer. If you want to round them, this is the time to do it. Okay. Um, you could also sand the edges against a flat surface as well, like we did uh, initially preparing the fins. Okay, and so now I'm just going to go through really quickly and check my edges. A lot of times we get a ridge there. Okay. 
All right. And then once you've got that done, go ahead and use some really fine sandpaper like 220 grit to give yourself a nice smooth finish here. Now I'm going to do the rest of these off camera uh, because um, if you can actually sit and watch somebody sand for this long, you probably have too much time on your hands. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and come back when I've got all of these sanded. The sanding sealer on the fins has all been sanded and our next step is to attach the fins to the body tube. And remember we had roughened up the spaces where we're going to do that. And so each fin now will go on those lines like that. And you want to make sure that you have a little bit of line exposed up above the fin there. If not, go ahead and extend that. That one's just a little bit short. All right, but you'll need that line to help you align the fin. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and lengthen this line, and then we'll come back and glue the fins on. All right, I extended my lines, and now we're going to put on the fins here. Now make sure that you apply the glue to the root edge of the fin. Okay, so the leading edge here is really similar in angle, but it's parallel to the grain. We don't want any glue here. The glue should go here. And I prefer wood glue for this step uh, because it dries a bit faster and gets tacky quickly. And here we want a thin bead. Okay, uh, Here's where a lot of beginners go wrong and think they need a whole lot of glue on here. In fact, that might be a little bit too much. So I'm just going to make a nice, even, but thin bead of glue here. And now I'm going to attach this onto the body tube. And I'm lining up this little angle here with the aft end of the tube and just sticking that to the line. And I'm going to bring it back off again. And I'm going to let this sit for 30 to 60 seconds to allow it to get tacky. And then we'll put the fin back on. Okay, so now I'm going to put this back where I had it. Okay, and just firmly put that into place. And now look down from above. Okay, that's just a little bit off my line there. So we want to check it this way, and then check from behind to make sure that it's actually perpendicular to the tube there. Okay. Now don't worry that we just used a little bit of glue here. That's going to set up faster, and after all the fins are on, we'll apply some fillets to either side to strengthen the fins that way. Here's where it takes some patience. If you're using wood glue, this needs to dry for at least 15 minutes before we go on to the next one. If you're using white glue, I suggest waiting at least 30 minutes. But have some patience, that way you don't have fins falling over as you're trying to put each one on. And then I recommend doing them in opposing pairs so that you can use the fin that's already on as a guide to get the other fin straight and in the same line and then go on and do the other pair of fins. So we've got some hurry up and waiting to do. I will do the other three fins off camera and come back when I'm done. My fins are all on and now I have to eat a little crow. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video to make sure and read ahead so that you don't miss anything. Well, I missed something. Now I'm going to blame this on Estes a little bit because they put the launch lug line right here at the lineup for our fin guide and I missed it. Okay, very. I, don't, I think this is the first kit I've ever seen that puts the launch lug line there. Um, so I missed it when we put the um, fin lines on. So there should be a launch lug line in between two of these fins. 
Now, by the time you see this video, I'll have put a warning in front of this so you don't necessarily make that mistake. Um, but this is the point in the video where I found the mistake. So we have a couple of things to do. Um, you could simply go in here and if you have enough room on whatever you're making your lines with, all right, you might be able to squeeze this in enough to draw a new launch lug line. Okay. Um, but you may not. Those fins really kind of get in the way. Um, it looks like I could just do it here if I wanted to. The alternative, though, is to put the launch lug along one of the fins. So here we're going to go back to the package where I secreted away the launch lug. Okay, so an alternative here is we can glue the launch lug in the inside angle of one of the fins here. And back in the 70s and 80s, this was actually a really common practice. I don't know why it fell out of favor. Um, some launch rods perhaps may get stuck doing that. Okay, so that's an option you can do is simply to glue it in and I would just go halfway uh, into the root edge there. If you are going to do this, I would recommend putting your fin fillet in first and then glue this into the fillet and then you could put an additional fillet between the launch lug and the fin and the body tube here. Okay, so whichever way you want to do it. If you didn't go through and preview the video, also, like I said, it would be a good idea, then you're in the same boat I am here. Okay. Uh, fortunately, I think I can just get in here far enough draw a launch lug line. There we go. Okay. Now it may not be exactly centered, although that looks pretty close. And so I'm just going to draw a line up in here. I don't need to get all the way top to bottom. Yep, that's fairly close. Look back to our instructions here so I don't make another mistake. Alright, so the launch lug aft end should be nine and a half centimeters or three and three quarter inches from the aft end of the rocket. Okay, so that is going to be right here. So my launch lug is going to go here, and I'm going to go ahead and roughen that up just a little bit like we did for the fins. Just a little bit to help the glue stick better. And then I'm going to attach the launch lug the same way I did the fins. So I'm going to start with a bead of glue here. I'm going to start with a bead of glue. And you can be a little bit heavier with this one um, because it doesn't have a lot of weight leveraged against it. Put this on. Okay. 
and once again take this off again and let that get tacky for about half a minute or so. Alright, my time has gone by. Stick that on there. Now I'm just going to sight down it and look from above. It looks pretty well centered. And now I will let this dry and when we come back we'll put in the fillets. My fins are all dry, as is my launch lug. And so now what I'm going to do is take some more glue and put in fillets along the sides of the fins and also along the launch lug. I get my glue open. <clears throat> and to do this, I'm just going to put down a bead of glue here, right along the inside. And then I'm going to take my finger and simply smooth over that, working it into the corner there, and then removing excess glue. Okay, and any excess I can put on the next side here, and then add to it as necessary. This is going to strengthen the fins and also increase the aerodynamics a little bit by reducing what's called interference drag, which occurs anytime you have perpendicular surfaces coming together here. Now, if you want thicker fillets, it's best to do it in multiple layers and not just to try and get a really thick layer of glue because the glue is going to tend to flow toward gravity and if you don't have this exactly level it'll flow to the front or to the aft and if you do them all at once and they're thick they'll flow down the fins and we don't want that. You can also consider if you want really thick fillets uh, is to use a little wood putty or modeling putty to do that because at that point you don't need the strength of the glue. But you would still want glue fillets underneath the putty. Okay, personally, <clears throat> I just do this for strength. Um, I really don't need the built up fins. And something to be aware of, if you have really built up um, fillets, they could add a significant amount of weight to the back of the rocket and might change its stability. So you always want to check the stability if you're going to make a mo major modification like that. Uh, you notice there's some little glue lumps in here. Usually those aren't a problem as long as they're still moist enough that they can smooth out. Um, if you do get bubbles or dips in this, the best thing to do is simply go ahead and keep doing the fillets, let them dry, and then if you need to, you can fill in any gaps or holes that have arisen. If you keep trying to go back and, and refill, work over where you're at, a lot of times you make the situation worse. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing over here. on the launch lug. And the launch lug is usually where I end up with gaps. Because it's a different angle than we have on the fins. And we're going between two curved surfaces. Okay, and I'm just going to check and make sure. Okay, there's a little lump there. Okay, I'll deal with that later. Right. And you may have a couple of bubbles forming there. But as I said, the best thing to do now is just let this dry. And you want to do so horizontally. So if I just lay it on the fins like that, it's tipping forward a little bit. And what I can do is just find something of the right height. The glue bottle is a little bit too thick. There we go. Masking tape roll works. 
And now I'm just going to let this dry uh, for several hours before I come back and continue building. The glue fillets on the rocket are dry on both the fins and the uh, launch lug. You might notice there are some bubbles in there, but the surface of the bubbles is still intact, so that should be hidden by the paint. I've cut out the launch lug anchor from the fin marking guide, and now I'm going to attach the shock cord. And so to do this, I'm going to just run a bead of glue here all the way down. And I'm going to take the shock cord here and place it from the two down over the three. And I'm going to do it a little bit of an angle. And this is just to keep the uh, mount from getting too thick as the shock cord gets folded over itself. Right, so here I'm going to take the one section and I'm going to fold that over onto the two. And I'm going to spread the glue around here so that it gets nice and even over the whole surface. All right, and I'm going to fold this again and take the two into the three. Move that all out. And now I'm putting a bend in it here so that it has about the same radius of curvature that the inside of the rocket does. Right, I'm going to put some more glue on here. Spread it all around with the finger because we want all of this to adhere to the inside of the rocket. And now I'm going to take and put this down inside the rocket. And the top edge should be at least an inch and a half inside. And my rule of thumb is, is get this as far down as you can. So as far as your finger will reach, go ahead and put that down there. And I'm going to flip it over so that I can press inside against my hand. to the inside of the rocket, squeeze out any air bubbles, so that now I've got my shock cord here, and that's well inside so that when the nose cone is put on, we don't want the nose cone um, jamming up against the shock cord mount there. While the glue is drying on the shock cord mount, I'm going to prepare the nose cone here. Uh, as you, you can see here, there are seams from the molding process, and those are going to interfere with our paint. And so I'm going to take some 150 grit sandpaper here and sand those down. Okay, I'm not going to sand anything on the shoulder, at least not yet. Mainly I want to concentrate on these two seams. All right, and then you can take a tissue or a paper towel uh, moisten it either with some rubbing alcohol or just some water works fine uh, to remove the plastic dust from this. Uh, I use alcohol as it evaporates faster and so I can get to where I'm seeing. Okay, so you can still see a little bit of the seam there, but I've taken off most of the depth of it. And so when I put primer and paint on this, that should go away. Uh, if you need to, if it's got a really big gouge or something like that in there, you can use a little bit of model uh, plastic model putty on that, and that will help fill that in. Just 
after it dries, you just sand it down once more. <clears throat> now there's a little piece of flash in here, just leftover plastic from the mold. And if it doesn't fall out readily on its own, just cut it out with a, your hobby knife. Just be careful not to cut through this loop here. Because it is going to go on the other end of our shock cord. And here you can just make a, a couple of half hitches or a double knot. Okay, and then just pull from both ends. Make sure that knot's in place well. And then you're going to want to cut off this excess piece here because if it gets caught up against the nose cone shoulder between that and the tube, it could mean that it doesn't eject properly. So I'm going to remove all but about five millimeters of that end, like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my glue and apply that to the knot. And all this is going to do is help lock the knot in place so that it doesn't slip by itself. Okay, it's not supposed to hold it on to the loop or anything like that. Um, you want to avoid using super glue or plastic model cement on this because that will erode the rubber. White glue or wood glue is fine. The last structural thing we need to do is add the parachute. And if you look in the instructions, okay, it shows putting the parachute loops through this loop in the nose cone and then pulling the parachute back through that loop and that permanently attaches the parachute on there. I prefer not to do that. Um, I like to be able to take my parachutes off and exchange them as needed. So I use a snap swivel like this. This is the same thing you'd find in a fishing store. And it doesn't really matter what size it is. This could be the smallest one available and it will still be strong enough to support the weight of the rocket. What does matter is the size of the actual snap loop here. It needs to be big enough to clear the loop on the nose cone. Okay, now this nose cone has a really thin loop so most of these are going to work. Uh, in some model rockets where you've got a thicker loop here, you may need a bigger snap swivel. So now I'm going to gather up the shroud lines here, and these are all pre-attached in three loops. So I'm just going to gather those on my finger, and now I'm going to hold the middle of the parachute here with my other hand, and now just pull this taut, and just I'm going to change the length of the lines going around my fingers until all six of those angles there of the parachute are at about the same spot. Okay, so once I've got that, I'm going to hold this loop in place. Now grab that. And I don't want this these to slip, because right now they're all more or less the same length. So I'm always keeping at least two fingers holding this together. Now I'm going to make a loop out of this and squash it down and pass all three loops through the eye, the swivel eye of the snap swivel. And I'll open up my loops again, and I'm still holding them back here so I'm not changing the lengths. And now I'm going to put the snap swivel through the loops, like that, and then just pull it taut. And I come back and check and yeah, they moved a little bit, but not enough for me to want to have to worry about changing this around again. So I'm going to call that good. And here I'm also going to put a little dab of glue so that my knot doesn't move. It doesn't take much, and you can just kind of work it in there. Okay, so now, um, if I'm just displaying my rocket, I don't have to have my parachute all wadded up inside it. Um, for you know months at a time sometimes. I can take this out, hang it up, put it in the uh, drawer loosely, wherever I'm storing it, and then when I'm ready to launch, simply open that up, clip it onto the nose cone, 
close the snap, and it's ready to go. And the other advantage to this is, you know, if I'm on a, say, a particularly windy day and I want to use a smaller parachute, I can just take this out. All right, well, maybe I've got a really calm day and I want to have a nice, slow descent, then I might put a bigger parachute on. Okay, so this gives you the flexibility to do that. So structurally, this rocket is finished. Um, I am going to paint it off camera. There are lots of good tutorials on spray painting rockets out there on the internet. So if you want to see the actual process of doing that, I suggest looking at one of those. For me, it's really hard to film myself spray painting a rocket. So when I come back, I'll have the rocket spray painted, and we'll look at how to put the decal on. I've painted my baby Bertha. And before you painting purists start winding up here, yes, I know you can see a little bit of the grain there yet, and a little bit of a spiral in there. That's fine. Um, personally, unless I am building a model specifically for show, as long as it looks good from five feet away, I'm happy with it. Uh, because I've lost too many models to trees and such that putting a lot of time and effort and money into a perfect paint job just really doesn't have a good return for me. I'd rather make it good enough, give it some protection, and get it out on the launch pad. So we have um, just two self-stick decals here. And it's a good idea to wash your hands before starting to apply these. That way the oils on your skin are decreased. And I had a uh, viewer of one of my other videos make the suggestion of using tweezers to help position that. So I've got some uh, fine point tweezers here. <clears throat> okay, um, And really this needs to go down the length of the tube. I am doing it on the opposite side of the launch lug there. Okay. And you can put this in either direction, so you, sh you could go that way, or you could go that way, whichever you like. Uh, I'm going to put the words at the, the forward end. And so here, I'm going to just bend this up a little bit. Just enough to start it. And here's where I'm going to use my tweezers now to pick this up, rather than my finger so that I've got fewer fingerprints on it. Now these things tend to stick in place as soon as they get there. So I'm going to do this really carefully. is pretty close to the center and good enough for me. So now I'm just going to run right down the middle of this lightly with my finger to press it down. And then I'll go down along the bottom edge or the top edge, depending on which way you're viewing this. All right, then go down each edge and you're just going to smooth out all the air bubbles now. And you can do this periodically. So once this is set for an hour or so, just come back and do it again. Okay, and then we have a little SD symbol here. All right, some people want to put this on the body tube, on the fins, wherever. Um, I'm going to put mine right over here. to go right across here. Like that. Again, we just rub this one in. Okay, so there's the baby Bertha, all ready to go. 
All it needs is an engine and we can launch it very soon. Hope you had as much fun building this as I did and have a good launch and a safe recovery and you'll see me on the next video.